Biblical epics have been a part of our pop culture since long before most of us first attended Sunday school, but none have struck a chord more strongly than the story of Moses, as told in Cecil B. DeMille's 1956 mega-hit, The Ten Commandments. In that film, Charlton Heston stars as an Egyptian prince who finds out about his true upbringing and sets out to complete a noble task sent by God himself to free his people from bondage. Regardless of where you stand on the belief system, the story of Moses is still one of the most compelling human fables ever told, and that's reason enough for Hollywood to want to retell it again and again and again. Now with the resurgence in religious themed cinema growing ever more prominent, now would seem like the best time to crank out yet another reinterpretation of the book of Exodus, only this time with former Batman Christian Bale starring as Moses, Joel Edgerton as his half-brother Ramesses, and Sir Ridley Scott serving as the film's director. Of course, you probably heard by now of the film's controversial casting decisions, and while I still hold this aspect against the film, it's one of the least of problems this movie suffers from, well, for the most part. But before we dive headfirst into the negative, let's focus in on the positive. The first of which being the visual layout of the film. Kind of a no-brainer, considering how easily these worlds we can conjure up with nowadays technology can be, but there's just no denying how beautifully realized these sets, costumes, and computer-generated backdrops are. The same sentiment can be said for both the film's opening battle sequence that will surely trigger fond memories of Gladiator for Ridley Scott fans, and for the many scenes featuring the infamous plagues. Still think the PG-13 rating waters down on-screen bloodshed? Well here's a pack of pissed off crocodiles devouring a boat full of people to prove you wrong. There is also an intriguing element the filmmakers applied to the plagues, which is making them come across as natural freak occurrences than random acts of God, but more on that later. And despite the heated controversy, I still like some of the performances, particularly from Bale, Edgerton, and the 11-year-old actor named Isaac Andrews, who appears as the childlike personification of God. Whether or not this might upset folks who prefer God as either a talking flaming bush or Morgan Freeman, this kid managed to outperform almost every big-name actor in this movie, despite his limited amount of screen time. As for the rest of the ensemble, most of them either play the same old caricatures we've seen them do a thousand times before, or just spout out two lines of dialogue and disappear altogether from the remainder of the film. In this case, it's Sigourney Weaver. Which is disappointing to know since I believe this is the first time in over 30 years she's worked with Ridley Scott, and this is the best role he could offer her? Luckily for Breaking Bad's Aaron Paul, Weaver's brief yet pointless appearance makes his role seem even more important than it ever was in comparison, and all he does is hide behind a bunch of rocks and eavesdrop between conversations with Moses and Junior Almighty, who in the film's case, may or may not be the product of Moses' imagination. At first, you begin to think that this film would continue down this route of debunking religious fanaticism by grounding the plagues in reality and turning Moses into a possible madman, but of course, they never quite go all the way with it, as I'm assuming the makers got cold feet and didn't want to upset the Christian market any further. The end result is a sluggishly paced two and a half hour epic that can't decide whether or not it wants to be pro or anti-religion, and it honestly could have been good either way, had it maintained the one element that held this story together in the first place, emotion. Every time we see characters interacting with one another or go through the most perilous of obstacles, you're just left feeling cold, empty, and could care less with whatever happens on screen. There's a reason why this story has endured for as long as it has, and there's a reason why it never ceases to captivate and inspire with each passing generation. And the fact that Ridley Scott and his team couldn't pull off a smidgen of what made movies like The Ten Commandments and The Prince of Egypt the classics they are today kind of saddens me a little. So on a scale from 1 to 10, I'm giving Exodus Gods and Kings a 5. With that said, our show has now concluded. I'm the host, and I will see you next time on another Midnight Movie Madness.